Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys my updates to Grid Builder. So this is going to be for version 4.2 of the plugin, which is for Godot 4.3 and above. So one of the obvious changes is that I created a template for a action bar for switching to the different modes in the plugin. So a new mode has been added, info mode. We'll get to that in a second. So let's start by going to build mode. So that's two on the keyboard now, as per the controls over here on the left. And I'm going to select the smithy and just place it into the scene. Uh, just as normal, you can rotate it. You can flip it with the different controls on the keyboard. So when we're placing an object, or if I hit escape and then want to switch over to info mode, you can hover over objects. And you'll see in the top right hand corner, we have a target informer and a template UI for that. What you're seeing here is information, basically the name of the node and the position where that node is located inside of the 2D world. So the main point of the template is to allow you to access the node's information, uh, regardless of which manipulation or build mode you're trying to use. So if I switch into move mode, uh, you'll see that we can still hover over the targets and it's going to show what's going on here. If I try to move an object, then now it's going to be uh, referring to the object being moved, this copy, not the original. So you'll know exactly which position you're placing the object into. And that also applies to objects being placed. So I can select something like the concave test object or a polygon test object, I guess is the node name over there. And it's going to show that in the top right. So since the information being displayed is just basic node 2D information, obviously the intention there is that if you have a bunch of other statistics about objects, maybe uh, how much they cost, how much HP a character would have, or that kind of stuff, you can extend the target informer and add that extra information as additional labels while still having all of the signals already set up in the background for use with all of these different modes. So another thing I want to point out here is that it's using the node name to generate what it's showing for the object info by default. And if you've used Godot for a while, you'll know that there's numbering for different nodes that have the same name in the hierarchy. So you'd have Smithy, um, the original, and then Smithy2, Smithy3, so on and so forth. That might be an underscore. So if I was to Alt-Tab here back to the editor, and then we look at, say, the manipulation system, you'll see that there's a new resource here, the name displayer. So by default, the name displayer is going to convert the node's name and the hierarchy uh, to a more gameplay readable uh, version, stripping out the numbering and adding spaces when needed. But if you have another way of creating the name and showing the name of each node you want in game, then you can simply put a custom name method. So for instance, you could use the two string method and then override it in your own custom script and then use that to grab the name of the object. So you might also have like a name property. I like to give things um, like a export var display name, and then you could just have two string return display name as an example. But if you prefer, you can just use the default as well. So you can see the default display name I created, adding spaces and removing the numbering uh, works generally good. So over here, we can see that the polygon test object, if you look at object info, it'll show um, the spaces and it removes the numbering and that's probably good enough, at least for uh, prototyping. So also this applies to the build log. So by default, the build log is also going to be using the name displayer, which means it's going to be adding in spaces and stripping out the numbers at the end. And that just gives a more uh, clean gameplay readable naming for the objects that are being manipulated inside of the system. So also to point out with the template action bar, you can of course switch to the mode you want by clicking on the individual buttons. So that changes the mode on the mode state. And then the systems are going to respond to that. So if we go into move mode, clicking here, we'll be able to move the objects like you would expect and also rotate and flip them if you have that enabled as well. And so that's pretty much the major changes for this update of Grid Builder. Um, of course, there's extra bug fixes in the background. You can see I've added a whole bunch of GD unit tests and the test projects, making sure everything's working. So if you're interested in this version of the plugin, you can get it on itch.io or Patreon and Ko-Fi for supporters. So thanks for watching this update video for Grid Builder. I've been Chris, and I will see you guys in my next video.